Good morning, folks. It's Friday. All right. Uh, we're going to have a little internet uh, connection issues. Hopefully, stays live the whole time. Not any issues. Seems like we went live. So hopefully that's working. We're going to be in Mark uh, chapter 5, and uh, starting in verse 21, and we're going to read to the end of Mark chapter 5. And this continuation of uh, actions that Jesus takes, various things that he's doing, miracles that are being performed, and um, uh, really shows the power and authority that Jesus has. So let's have a word of prayer, and then Matt's going to read for us, and we'll dig into the text. Gracious Father, thank you for this bringing us here this day. Thank you for your presence in our life. Thank you for the hope that is ours in Jesus. My heart goes out to um, students at State High um, and the, the tragedies that took place at, the, at State High uh, with the young man taking his own life. I just pray, Lord God, for your peace to be with people that we as a church community would... Um, really uh, press into uh, helping our neighbors, uh, being aware of mental health issues around us, and, and helping those who are struggling. So help us to, uh, to see the world through the eyes of Jesus. Um, he, he, is the, he is our only hope. He's our, he's our salvation. So Lord God, uh, <clears throat> help us to learn from you and to follow you and to trust in you. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So Mark chapter 5, uh, beginning in verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him, and a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a, dis, who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his, di and his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a motion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, but he, but he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they, and they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. All right. So that those, uh, those were Talithi Kumi um, is Aramaic for young one, feminine young one, little one in there. All right. So what are some things you observe here? As you we kind of went through uh, this section here. Well, there's sort of two stories, right? It's the one um, girl who was 12 years old and then the woman who suffered a hemorrhage for 12 years. Yeah. Sort of interesting at the same time using the 12. It's not exactly a biblical number that I think of. But, mm -hmm. 
anyway. Yeah, well, the 12 tribes. 12 tribes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, but I'm not sure if we would kind of put much weight on the numbers yeah. up in there. Uh, but you, uh, yeah, I, did, I hadn't thought of that, 12 years old and, and 12 years of, of uh, hemorrhaging. Yeah, I, don't know. I guess it doesn't mean anything, but no. interesting. Um, I think verse 30 stuck out to me of who touched my garments. I wasn't sure, you know, you look at that and the study notes sort of says it's like not an accusatory question, but an invitation for the woman to confess her faith, right? So it's not a yeah. mark of issue. Um, he, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't mad. No. Right. Well, as the, as the disciples point out, it's like uh, there's a whole crowd pressing in against you. Like, you'd be like, who touched your garments? It's like, well, yeah, like 50 people mm -hmm. <laughs> right in there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is an invitation in there. Mm -hmm. to the... But I guess uh, if you're that uh, woman, you know she was in fear and trembling, right? So I think she thought she thought she did something wrong. I guess right, or just wasn't sure how to react. Well, it's interesting that she kind of knew he was talking about her, even though there's other people that. Had that did touch. So there is, I think, that shows faith, great faith, because she could have just been like, well, how would he know? Like, if you didn't have faith, you'd be like, well, how would he know who touched him? There's a whole bunch of crowd pressing in. I'll just walk away, mm -hmm. you know. But she knows she was healed, and there no, she knows there's something special about Jesus, and she has faith. And so she does come to him. Mm -hmm. But I think... Maybe the fear and trembling, too, is like, you know, I wanted to be healed, and I believe that he could heal me, but I am actually healed uh, of this thing that I tried all kinds of remedies, it says, which uh, the Talmud, it says in the footnotes, they, they had uh, like 11 different remedies for this kind of bleeding. Mm -hmm. All of them they would look at as like superstitious now. Mm -hmm. So they had the various writing on this, and she probably tried all all kinds of stuff it didn't make her better at all uh for whatever she was suffering from it could have been some sort of uh ulceration or cancerous growth or whatever it is that's causing the, this this bleeding uh but jesus has authority and he and he brings healing mm -hmm. so. uh what do you make like daughter your faith has made you well and i and, and i think it's important for us to understand it's like Jesus is acknowledging her, her faith and trust in him, but it's not her faith in and of itself that made her well. It was Jesus who made her well, mm -hmm. and she and her faith received the power that Jesus has, received his gracious hand. Mm -hmm. Come here. All right, so what do you, what do you make of the, the next section there? Um. Sort of had a, I guess it'd be a smaller crowd, right? But um, they, they definitely didn't believe Jesus, right? It was um, they laughed at him, right? Uh, you know, they everybody knew that she was dead. Um, so, so <clears throat> one of the things is like it, it's kind of interesting. It's it's a cultural thing. It says they were weeping and wailing loudly, mm -hmm. and. Um, in, in a, this Middle Eastern culture, to show uh, your grief, you would show tremendous display of emotion in there. Uh, in fact, they even had some people that would sometimes be hired for funerals as professional whalers. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? You want that job? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if I can do that. Right. So, um, I mean, it was really to show your, the depth of emotion and stuff like that. And that's kind of foreign to, well, probably many people in the Lutheran church. It's kind of a Germanic background in a lot of cases. It's like, oh, someone died. I'm, uh, you know, and their display of emotion is I'm, I'm very sad or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like rarely do you see actual wailing, mm -hmm. right? You might see someone crying, I understand, but this, this uh, display of emotion at a very high level is something that's cultural 
uh, that we don't really experience. Now, some cultures you would. Um, I remember, uh, you know, hearing about the death of, I think when my grandmother, Italian side, died. And I wasn't there at the, oh, at the casket, the open casket, I think, funeral. But one of her sons threw, her, threw himself on the casket. We'd be like, wow. I mean, you know. So there's much more of a display of emotion uh, than in some cultures than in other cultures. Mm -hmm. In there. So I think sometimes we're a little too stoic <laughs> in the Lutheran church, and maybe other kinds of maybe it's a little too mm -hmm. over the top on there. Mm -hmm. But it, it is what would happen. So there's this weeping and wailing. It's interesting. He only brings like the inner circle Peter, James, and John. Mm hmm. They're the only ones that kind of get to go in uh, with him. And he shows his power. He says, little girl, I say to you, arise. Mm -hmm. and, and there's his power. Is there anything else that's jumped out at you at the, in this section? It just kind of sort of says that like she just woke up like immediately, right? It was, yeah. Um, began walking. Right. <laughs> I feel <mean>, like. <laughs> yeah. So they were overcome with amazement, right? It was stunning, obviously. Yeah. And he strictly charged them, no one should know this. Well, actually, that would be a little hard to hide because there was a whole bunch of people that he put out of the room that were wailing and weeping mm. over this girl's death. And now she's going to be like walking around the streets. <laughs> so, so it's going yeah. to be a little difficult yeah. to, to hide that that much in there. <clears throat> but he is trying to put a damper on uh, like who he is from a messianic standpoint. We see, we saw before this uh, the demon possessed man and the Gerasenes, uh, and he was allowed to speak into his parents and others about what God had done because he's in a Gentile region. Now they've crossed back over the lake and they're back into a Jewish region, Jewish territory. And he is trying to limit uh, the amount of how his, his fame is spreading because they're going to misconstrue it. Hey, this is the Messiah. Well, they do misconstrue it, right? This is the Messiah that's going to bring about the kingdom of Israel again. This is going to free us from the Romans. This, this is the guy that's going to do all this for us. Uh, so that was their that was their emphasis uh, instead of uh, seeing that his mission is much bigger than uh, Israel, much bigger than the kingdom of of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. so, uh, anything else you saw in there? Uh, I just think a general thing of uh, I think Jarius was worried about the delay, like in his prayer, right? And it, so it's God is always. Um, got us right it's like his time and his right and good yeah um, but we won't we don't see that at the moment like probably he's like well darn mm -hmm. he was too late mm -hmm. right so don't bother him anymore you know why trouble the teacher any further verse 35 uh, it's interesting they call him teacher rabbi because a lot of uh ministry of jesus there was a lot of teaching in that but he's more than just a teacher Mm -hmm. He's showing that. He's showing his power and authority mm -hmm. in there. <clears throat> so one of the things that um, I think that is really neat in the last couple days of going through this um, is this progression of miracles. And so we saw in chapter 4, uh, verse 35 and following, that a tremendous storm uh, gets whipped up on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus is sleeping, and his disciples say, don't you care, we're going to be drowning. Uh, and Jesus says, be still, be quiet, and the waves stop, the wind stops. Jesus has authority over the creation. And then, we, after that, in chapter 5, of the first verse 1 and following, you see Jesus as he crossed over to the other side. There's the demon-possessed man, who's possessed by multiple demons, legion. And Jesus... Uh, it has authority over the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So he has authority over creation. He has authority over the spiritual world. And now we see 
in the healing of the, the woman who has the flow of blood, he has authority over physical ailments. So we have creation, authority over creation, authority over the spiritual world, authority over sp uh, physical ailments, and culminating then with authority over death itself because he raises Jairus, his daughter, from the dead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to me, the, the way this is laid out, this progression of miracles, is really to kind of drive home the point that, hey, you're not dealing with just some teacher here. You're not dealing with so, just some prophet here. You're dealing with the Son of God, true God, that has come to us. And he has authority over creation, he has a, a authority over the spiritual world. He has authority over our physical, um, our physical bodies and has authority over death itself. So uh, pay attention to what he's saying. <laughs> Listen to what he's saying. And I think that's what's, what's being driven home. And uh, yet you're going to see increased opposition to him, even though he should, proves that he has authority over all these things. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a, uh, you know, just kind of keep in mind that progression as we've gone going through mark and then we'll take a look at the opposition that that uh, starts rising up even more and more mm -hmm. in there anything else any closing thought i think that's good you gonna go out and learn aramaic now <laughs> i mean <laughs> that was a com that was a common language so uh the new testament um and parts of the old testament have parts of the old testament have aramaic in it that was common uh new testament uh mainly written in Greek, uh, Koine Greek, the common Greek at the time. Uh, but Aramaic was used a lot in communication, in speaking amongst the Jews. Uh, Greek was kind of the equivalent of English today, like the business language of the world around them, mm -hmm. the Koine Greek, uh, so everybody could communicate with each other. So kind of like English today in, in there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we come in your presence. We're thankful for uh, the, your word. Your word is truth. We're thankful that Jesus has authority o over uh, all of creation. He has authority over all of the spiritual world. He has authority over the physical uh, realm of our bodies. And he even has authority over death itself. So we praise you and thank you that Jesus is the resurrection and the life that no matter what's going on in the world around us, no matter what's happening in our own life, we know the rock solid promises of Jesus will not fail, that he is the resurrection and the life. And as we put our faith and trust in him, that even death cannot separate us from him. There's nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love that God has for us in and through Jesus Christ. We praise you and thank you, Lord God, for those great and certain promises. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Will you, uh, everybody have a wonderful weekend. Stay warm. God bless you.